Today we are going to go over how to use additive scenes and scene interest management with Mirror Multiplayer in Unity. There are different reasons you may use additive scenes for your game. You may want to load a sub-scene into the main scene to be visible only by certain players when they are in range. Load multiple instances of a sub-scene and assign players to an instance of the scene to play matches independently or load different scenes per level or room the player can teleport between. You can find examples for each in the mirror examples, but I will be going over in more depth how to set up additive levels, or rooms, where each player can move to and transition between scenes in a world like you may see in games such as Stardew Valley. Players will be able to see other players that are in the scene or room with them, but won't be able to see other scenes or players that are in other scenes that that player is not. First, we are going to make a few changes to our project from previous tutorials. We want to make an offline scene for when the client or server has stopped, an online scene which will also act as our persistent scene to keep track of data between scenes, and then our room scenes which we will be able to move between. Let's start by changing the name of our main scene to offline scene. I'm going to be using the Network Manager KCP object for this tutorial but you can also use the Network Manager Steam object if you prefer. We are going to set up our own Network Manager anyway, so we will be making changes to the Network Manager object. Create a script called My Network Manager. This will allow us to customize our own class that inherits from Network Manager. We can use it to override certain functions that will give us more control for our game. Add the Mirror Library class at the top and change this script from a mono behavior to Network Manager. Also include the System Collections generic and Scene Management libraries at the top, as we will be needing those as well. We are going to start by setting up all of the scene variables that will be used to keep track of which scenes to load. First, let's get the name of the starting scene that players will spawn into when they connect to the server. Then we will get a list of all of the scenes that we will need to load. I will show an easy way to get these in a second. We will have a list to keep track of the loaded scenes. Last, a check to see if the player is currently in transition between scenes, and a check to see if the first scene is loaded yet. In the start function, we will load the scenes that are in the build settings. We can get the scene count using the Scene Manager library. Subtract 2 because we don't want to load the offline scene or persistent scene. Those will already be loaded by the Network Manager. We can now get each scene name that we will want to load. Don't forget to add the system.io library to the top to use path. Now let's create a coroutine method that will load the scenes. Loop through the scenes to load list and load it as an additive. If you are creating a 3D game, make sure to change local physics mode to use physics 3D. We are going to create an override function for on server scene changed. And if the server is changing from the offline scene to the online scene, it will start the coroutine to load all of the scenes.
If you see an error for the enumerator, it is because we forgot the system.collections at the top. We are also going to create an override function for on client scene changed. In this, we will only use a check to see if the client is already in a transition. Before we go further with this script, let's make some scene changes. On the Network Manager object, remove the HUD and transport components first, then remove the Network Manager component. We will add our new My Network Manager component to this object. Now add the transport and HUD components back on the object. Let's change the settings again. Drag the player prefab into its field. Uncheck Auto Create Player. We will be creating it in our script. Drag our offline scene to the offline scene field. We can go ahead and create the other scenes we will need. The persistent scene and the room scenes you will be moving between. Drag the persistent scene to the online scene slot on the network manager. Now go to File and Build Settings. We're going to open each scene we created and make sure to add it to our scenes and build list. Make sure our offline and persistent scenes are at the top. Go back to the offline scene and on the network manager object, let's set the first scene to load to go to the room one scene. Last, drag the network manager object to the transport field. We are now going to set up a screen fade transition. Create a canvas and then an image object attached to the canvas. Set this image to black. We also want to stretch this image so it covers the whole screen. Disable the screen image object. We will now create the script called Fade in Out Screen to handle the fade transitions. In this script, add a speed variable. At the top, Add the system collections in Unity Engine GUI libraries. Create a reference variable for the screen image object and a fade color variable. In the start function, we will need to set this object to don't destroy on load so it stays between scenes. Set the reference for the screen image object. Don't forget to set to true. We will first create a function that we can call that will show this screen with no delay, which we can use when we first load the server. This will set the screen to be visible. Now we will create a function to fade in the screen. This will slowly fade in the screen based on the speed variable.
Now the fade out function, which will do the same, except fade out the screen. That script is finished. Go back to the My Network Manager script. At the top, let's create a reference to the Faden Out screen script. We're going to create a new function called Load Additive, and we will pass a scene name. In this function, we will call Screen Faden. Then we're going to do a check if on client. And if it is, load the scene. Once the game has loaded the scene, we can set his loading scene and is in transition to false. Then call the on client scene change function. I'm going to do a check to see if we are loading the first scene or not and set a wait for seconds. Last, we will fade the screen out. We are going to create a similar function for unload additive and also pass in a scene name. We will fade the scene in. Check if on client, then unload scene and assets. Set is loading scene and is in transition to false, then call the on client scene change function. Now above these we are going to create an override function called on client change scene. We will check whether the scene operation is unloading or loading, and call that coroutine. We are now going to create the function to add the players to the scene. Find and loop through all network identity objects and set them active. This is where we will send a message to client telling it to load the first additive scene.
We can use get start position to get the starting position for the player. Instantiate the player and set the player position. We want to wait until the end of the frame to add the player to the connection. Now that that function is finished, we need a place to call it. We are going to create an override function for onServery ready and call the add player delayed function. Before we forget, go back up to the onServer scene changed and call the show screen no delay function from the fade in out screen script. Save and go to the screen fade canvas object. Add the fade in out script component to it. Now on the network manager object, drag the screen fade canvas object to the fade in out reference setting. If you'd like to support this tutorial, and also the development for the game I am currently working on, Home Slice, check out the Patreon which I will link below. Now back to the tutorial, thank you. Let's edit each scene. Go to the persistent scene and remove the main camera. This is where you can add your game managers. Next go to the room 1 scene, and also remove the main camera. We are going to create a new script called Physics Sim, which will handle the physics simulation for our scenes. It will work for both 2D and 3D games. Because Unity doesn't simulate physics for these scenes, this script will get the physics and simulate them for each scene. Go to each room scene and create a physics simulator object and place this script on it. Save and go back to offline scene. We are going to create another script for camera controller. Attach this script to your camera object. In the start function for this script, set it to don't destroy on load so it stays between scenes. You can play the game to test the screen fade at the start. We will now set up the scene portals, 
so players can move between scenes. Go to the room one scene. We're going to set up a couple walls here for testing. Then in the room two scene, we will change it up so we can tell the scenes apart. Go back to room one and create a new object called scene teleport. Now let's create a script and call it Transition to Scene. This will need to be a network object, so at the top, add the Mirror Library, along with the System Collection, Scene Management, and System Dio Libraries. Then change it from Mono Behavior to Network Behavior. Let's make a reference to our My Network Manager and fade in out screen scripts. Using the scene attribute, we can get a reference to the scene name that we will want to transition to, then get the position we would like to spawn at in that scene. Get the references in the awake function. Now we will create a server callback function to send the player to the scene. We will do a check to make sure it has a network identity. Get the connection, and then send a scene message to unload the current scene. We will set it to wait a few seconds before removing player from the connection. We can get and loop through all network start positions that we set up and find one that is in the scene we will be going to. Set the player position. Then we can move the player to the new scene and send a scene message to load the scene.
add the player back to the connection. Last, we will set the player script back to enable. We can now add the on trigger enter 2D function to check if player has run into the scene trigger. Disable the player script and then only if on the server start the send player to new scene coroutine. Go back to Unity in the Scene Teleport object. We are going to add the Box Collider 2D and set it to Is Trigger. Drag the Transition to Scene script to this object. The Network Identity component will be added automatically because it inherits the network behavior. Drag the room to scene we will transition to to the first field. Then the name of the scene position object we will create in the room to scene. We will go ahead and create the spawn position for this scene. Now go to the room to scene and create the scene teleport that we will use to get back to room 1. Create the room to spawn position object. On the room spawn position objects, add the network start position component. In each scene, we need to add the network identity components to the wall objects. We want to do this for any objects that the player may interact with or need networked. For any static non-networked objects, such as buildings and other scenery, we will set up an environment object and attach the network identity component to it. This is where you can place trees or other visuals. Now go back to the offline scene and on the Network Manager object, add the Scene Interest Management component. In the next video, I will be going into more detail about how you can edit the script to customize your own game. Go to the Player Prefab and let's add a Collider and Rigid Body so the player can collide with the walls and scene triggers. Set angular drag to zero and gravity scale to zero. The collision detection to continuous and interpolate to interpolate. We are going to improve the player move script a bit. Add a variable to reference the player rigid body. Walking speed and movement speed variables. Floats to keep track of the input.
and two bulls to check if is walking or is idle. In the awake function, get the rigid body. Now we can redo the code in the update function. In fixed update, we will move the player. Save and go back to Unity. We can now test. Set the fade and out screen speed to 5. From the offline scene, run the game and you will see your player is under room 1 scene. When you move to the scene trigger, it will move the player to the room 2 scene. You will see it's slightly different for other clients. When you join the host as a client, you will only load the current scene and the players will be under the persistent scene. On the host player, they will have all scenes loaded, but only the current scene will be visible. If you run into any issues following this tutorial, put them in the comments below. If you'd like to support this tutorial and also the development of my game, Home Slice, check out my Patreon, where I will be sharing gameplay clips exclusive designs, and more as the game progresses. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to support the channel and subscribe to stay updated on future videos. Thank you for watching.